Yo, what's going on, working. guys? Your boy, man. Today, I'm coming to you guys with Other some Maple Max Story piercing. content. So, today, I'm going to be talking about Labyrinth Halls. And this dungeon is the dungeon that I consider the, the easiest hard dungeon great. in Maple Story 2. Now, this is personally my opinion, but it's super easy. You don't have to worry about boss one shots, it's quicker. And a lot of people think Fire Dragon is the easiest, and I think people are just overlooking this dungeon because Fire Dragon is the first one they went to. It was in a closed beta, and people, and it was it was first the only one available. So a lot of people just like to run Fire Dragon out of comfort, but I think people should start running this one because it's a lot easier. So today I'm going to give you guys a guide just in case you do not run it, you haven't run it yet, and you want to figure out how to beat it. So let's get into today's. So before we dive into the stages and phases of the dungeon, let's first discuss the the required gear score and members that you should have in your party or group so gear score you really can run it with any gear score at 2100 yeah. um I, i'm pretty sure you can run this at with four the worst in my personal opinion it's really not that hard it's very difficult now you don't need 3.5k gear score now if you do run this with a group of four 4k gear score people i personally beat this in like six minutes sometimes a little bit quicker it's an extremely quick dungeon you can fly through it with a really good team now as I far as your party members you if there. you're lower on the gear score side i would recommend uh, a priest because uh, it i mean it does you are going to take quite a bit of damage in it but personally i do all dps runs and you just want to have some potions and with the maple store the maple hill event and the halloween event you should be able to get a lot of potions it's really easy to come across potions right now so make sure you grind those up get those potions but like i said lower if you if you don't feel confident if you're lower than maybe three maybe around 3k gear score you may want to grab yourself a priest but this can easily be done with all dps and that's my preferred method to do it because it's a little bit quicker but if you do have a healer, you do save up on some of the potions. Oh. All right, guys, so let's focus I on room number shoot. one. So they once you enter the room, you're going to be greeted shoot. with two sets of mobs. You're going to have the left side mobs, and this you're going to have the right side mobs. Left. So oh, for time's shot. sake and not to just get it complicated, we're going to just focus on one method. You can split up in your group and take out both at the same time, but we're just going to focus on the right side first. So the right side mobs are going to be getting healed by the left side mobs. But if your, your group is decently or you all four go down there, you can Wait, easily out damage these, the, like the healing and just kill all the mobs. So you're going to focus on kill all these mobs. No special mechanics right here. Just no, know they're going to get healed from the left side. So fuck? make sure you DPS in them down and, and, and you know, just take them out. So after you take them out, you want to go focus on the left side. So left side, oh, yeah, this is a little right bit here, tricky, not too much. But the platform will do damage over time on you. So you want to... You want to, you know, heal up, you know, heal up, make sure you have your potions. And you also can kind of stand on the platform. I think I do do it in the video. You can kind of, it's like a platform area that you can kind of stand on to negate the damage just a little bit. It won't, you won't be actually standing on platforms like the pillars in the middle. You kind of stand on those, kind of negate some of that damage. So you won't stand on the floor. But as long as you stand on the floor, you will take damage over time. And on top of the, the, the ass DPS on you, it will be draining some, some damage on you. So make sure you guys do that together if you're new to this or you're, or you're low gear score. And make sure you have your potions. You're going to have some potions. If you got a healer, make sure you stay with the healer because you will take damage in time. But mainly this phase is just taking out mobs and is fairly simple. All right, guys. So moving on to those, room number two of the that. dungeon. Pretty much the same crap. layout, but this time the left side is the floor that's going to be doing damage over time to you. So on this side, what I like to do is I like to send three people on the left side to quickly DPS down the mobs, because the, the mobs on the left side will heal the mobs on the right side. So you want to take the, send three people to kill the mobs, and you see the steps, you guys are going to see it, I'm going to stand on the steps and just drag the mobs to me. On these steps, you will not take damage over time, and you can easily do DPS to the boss, and they'll save a little bit of health. On the right side, you're gonna want to send one person there, and there's gonna be a mob in the very back of the of the platform, and he's gonna be standing this on the on a column platform. You want to take him out because what he does is he grants the mobs on the right side a shield. So until you take him out, the mobs will be pretty much invincible. So you want to immediately take him out, and you're good to go because these guys won't regain shields. So after you take out all the mobs on the left side, and you take out the guy who grants the shields, you then want to go. You're you're then gonna to want to pick up these purple pots and throw them at the mobs on the right side, the warlords, because they're going to have a shield on them. The only way to, to get the shields off of them is to throw the purple pots on them. <laughs> that sounded weird for some reason. Throw the pots at them, and eventually they will, they will come off. They won't reach in, and you can DPS down the mobs. So after you've done that, you're pretty much done. DPS all the mobs, and we can move on to stage three. All right, guys, so now we're moving on to room three, which is the final room before the boss. So if you guys haven't noticed just yet, 
Um, the darker tiles are the tiles that are going to do damage over time on you. So this time, the middle section of tiles are the ones that are going to do damage over time on you. So everybody in your party wants to make sure you guys take out the ones in the middle first. The two calls in the middle, make sure you guys take those guys out immediately. That's the first thing you want to do. After that, I tend to we tend to split up in two sides. So two people go to the left side, two people take out the right side mobs. And you're going to want to DPS the Carls down first because the Carls have this stun move, which is really annoying, and it does a lot of it does a lot. It has a huge radius. It doesn't do a lot of damage, but they will stun you, and you will be stunned like for quite a quite a for quite some time. So make sure you guys focus the Carls down first. So after you guys take the Carl down on the left side, take out the right. I need to focus on the warlord and take those guys out so that's pretty simple just take out the mobs just make sure you take out the cars first because they do stun you and you don't want to get infinite stun like nothing because that gets really annoying so now we're moving on to the final boss room all right guys so we finally made it to the boss kaibo and to be honest kaibo plays pretty similar to any normal dungeon boss he doesn't have any special mechanics he doesn't really have any one-shot moves that you have to look out for, and it's just really simple. So he has around three moves that he'll do besides his basic attacks. He has a move where he'll flip in the air and slam his sword down. He has a move where he'll charge his sword and he'll like pierce into you. And he also has this move where he will do a Kamehameha. Like it's like a, just like a black beam that he'll shoot out and do like a Kamehameha blast in my opinion. Sometimes he will charge it up and he'll start teleporting around. But for the most part, these moves doesn't do any that much damage. Now the, the sword move where he jumps in the air and slams it down, that's the most powerful. It can't one-shot me, but if you're lower level, it may be able to one-shot you. Followed by the sword pierce is the second strongest move. Does quite a bit of damage, but I've never been one-shotted about it. And followed by the last move, the Kamehameha. And that does, it doesn't do much damage, but it will stun you. And the stun is very annoying. So watch out for that. He'll teleport around. But I think I ran with a 2100, like a 2300 person. And it didn't, they weren't getting one-shot by anything. So... You don't, I don't think you have to worry about getting one shot or anything. Now you're going to have the fire grates. We'll put stacks of fire on you. And he also, every time he slices you with a sword, he will put like this, this stack of damage on you, which gay. will do damage over time. Now you can get five stacks of damage on you, which was very annoying. If you if hey, if you get five stacks of damage on you, you hey, you're gonna be running through your potions. You're gonna be spamming all the potions up. You're gonna be praying that the healer continues to heal you because your health will begin depleted. But for the most part. It's fairly easy, and I think the stack lasts for 15 seconds, and I, every time it hits you, I don't think it resets. So make sure if you guys get around three stacks, you want to start pulling away a little bit, try to get some of that rain damage in, because five stacks is fairly, fairly lethal. So now during the phase, he will spawn mobs in the in the scene. So initially, you probably think I need to kill these mobs. And these mobs are the mobs will start healing and be like, oh my gosh, they're healing them. Let me kill these mobs, but. You can actually out DPS those mobs. The mobs do not heal much at all, and you have to spend no focus on the mobs. So when mobs spawn, pay them no attention. You actually kill yourself more trying to fight the mobs. The mobs actually do a, quite a bit of damage, and if you try to go to them, they will attack you. If you stand far away, they will not attack you. They will only attack you if you start attacking them. So just continue to focus the boss T to DPS them down. And that's literally all you have to do for all the phases. Even when you spawn all the mobs, ignore every single mob because they're worthless. You can literally out DPS. I don't know why they thought they were healing much. I don't hope they don't change it because it's easy. And guys, that is pretty much it. This boss run is completely easy. It's quick. Is you get straight to the point, you fight a boss, and it's pretty much like every other normal boss. You don't have any, no special thing to look out, no no special really mechanics. Is. It's an easy, straightforward boss. You just DPS him down, try to stay alive, and there you go. So hopefully you find this tutorial guide pretty easy, the helpful, something it, like that. I don't know if you did or not. Dragon. We're going to be having more for you guys in the future. Dragon. We're going to be covering almost all the dungeons. Just in case you guys don't run it, just in case you guys want to know, guys, because I know there's not a lot on YouTube. So if you guys enjoyed it, I'm gonna get you guys in my next one. If you guys want a special guy, let me know which one you want to see next in the comment section. And I'm gonna get you guys in. Today's be your boy B Main. I'm signing out. Peace.